Hello, my name is Lauren Sanders, and I'm a staff scientist at NASA Gene Lab. Today, I will be presenting our work in a poster entitled Evaluation of Batch Effect Correction Methods for Space Biology RNA Sequencing Data. NASA Gene Lab is an open source, publicly available repository for space flight and space relevant experimental omics data, mainly from model organisms. Small spaceflight experiments are often aggregated together to increase statistical power, which can introduce technical variation or batch effects. Our current work focuses on understanding and mitigating technical batch effects in a specific type of spaceflight biological omics data, RNA sequencing. To better understand the presence of batch effects in space biological RNA sequencing data, we combined seven gene lab RNA sequencing data sets from space flown and ground control mouse liver. These data sets come from experiments flown on several different flight missions, and the RNA sequencing libraries were prepared with two different library preparation methods, polyadenylation and ribodepletion. We highlight these two technical factors because after a review of PCA plots, we found that they can contribute the most strongly to batch effects in the combined data sets. In this work, we evaluate the effectiveness of five different popular batch effect correction tools, COMBAT, COMBAT-SEQ, and three tools from the MBATCH suite from MD Anderson, Empirical Bayes, ANOVA, and Median Polish. We evaluate the performance of these correction methods using six different criteria. Batch QC, PCA, dispersion separability criterion, which describes the clustering within versus between batches, correlation of log fold change between flight and ground control samples across all data sets, and comparison of differentially expressed genes between flight and ground control samples within each data set before and after correction or across all data sets. We implemented a scoring function categorization to evaluate each combination of correction methods and batch variables. For example, combat correction of the library preparation variable. A simplified description of our scoring method is shown here. Imagine each of these two dimensions represents a specific evaluation criterion. In reality, we have six, but only two are shown. Suppose each point on this plot represents a competing method variable pair. As you can see, each pair's performance changes somewhat depending on the criteria you use. We can then consider all linear criteria trade-off functions. There is an infinite number of these functions, but I am only showing two here. Our goal is to find which point or method variable pair maximizes or optimizes a given trade-off function. For example, these two functions maximize these two points. We can then calculate the percent volume of trade-offs optimizing each candidate, which helps us quantify the contribution from each evaluation criteria. Our initial results indicate that COMBAT outperforms other methods. COMBAT, correcting for library preparation, was assigned over 34% volume, followed by COMBAT-SEQ, correcting for library preparation, and COMBAT, correcting for mission. This batch effect correction pipeline will be publicly available to users in Gene Lab's upcoming multi-study analysis and visualization portal. Users can select datasets and samples, and if they wish to bypass the correction and go straight to multi-study analysis, that is an option. Otherwise, users can evaluate batch effects using PCA, manually select the variable or variables for correction, or the variable with the highest principal component one value will be automatically selected. The user can select correction methods or if the default is to try all five. Scoring function categorization is then run and the method variable pair with the highest volume is selected automatically unless the user makes a manual selection. The data will then be corrected and fed into multi-study analysis. In conclusion, I would like to thank the Gene Lab Data Processing and Data Systems teams, my co-authors, the Gene Lab Analysis Working Group members for their feedback, and our funding.